Good morning, everyone in the GCC family. Uh, so good to have you with us today. Uh, regardless of what you're wearing at home, doesn't even matter. Um, this is very, very special day. Uh, what's actually getting ready to happen? We've got the the band that's here on the sound stage in the children's wing where we're set up for this online church experience and we're getting ready to worship. Uh, we've actually got this incredible set put together about just the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. And I, I want to say this as we're being ushered into worship right now, and that's this, that the promise to the church is greater than the challenge that the church is facing. And the church has got, we have challenges in front of us right now. I mean, as our nation is having riots and there's there's problems and issues systemically with with race and the way we relate to our fellow men person to person and there's there's issues as we're coming up on an election and tensions are tight and everyone's get this Jesus is the promise of the church and he's greater than the challenges in front of us so as we are ushered in this one I want to just tell you that we're in regathering mode last night we were on the beach we had 21 baptisms on the beach and today this is what's incredible if you want to get baptized today you some of you are probably watching this on your iPhone if not you can throw it to your iPhone you can come to the church right now I'll get in the tank with you I'm here uh, I've got an opportunity I can set, I can talk with you, and we can baptize you in the middle of this service. And so if you are wanting to be baptized uh, this morning as we're here on campus, then you can just say so in the chat if you're on Facebook. If you're on the church's online, uh, if you've gone to the website, you can say so you want to be baptized there. Or uh, if you're on uh, YouTube, you can say it in the chat there, and one of our staff members will talk with you. They'll give you directions, and we'll facilitate you coming and uh, getting baptized today while worship is happening or the reading of the Word is happening. Uh, you can do this. If you missed last night because of the thunderstorm, which was crazy, there's lightning, and uh, we got it done real quick before the storm hit us, you can still do it today. Um, and God is moving during this season. We've been doing 21 days of prayer. Uh, we, we just finished up uh, the first week of that. And it's incredible what's happening as we come together every morning at 6 a.m. to be praying. And uh, we are regathering. We're in regathering mode. And so we're going to be relaunching online church. This is never going to go away if this is how you've come to be a part of our family. This is never going away, online church. We're relaunching it with some new incredible features. But uh, as we are making steps back next Friday night. Now, this Labor Day weekend next weekend, so get this. Next Friday night at about 6.30, we're going to be starting food trucks. There's going to be food trucks on the campus, and right in the heart of our campus on Friday night at 6.30, as the food trucks are coming out, we're going to have an outdoor uh, meeting time. We'll be social distanced. It'll be safe. Uh, being outside uh, really lowers that uh, the issues that we have to deal with personal protection. And so we're going to be spread out in the lawn, and we're going to. You guys are going to be there. We're going to be rocking. All right. We're going to be. The worship band's going to be there. It's going to be an incredible time of worship that starts at 7:30 as the sun's going down and the heat of the day is gone, and we're walking into Labor Day weekend. We're regathering as a church. Then, uh, if if you're like I got to do it on Sunday, we're, we're going to be re-airing a version of that on Sunday at our regular service times. But if you want to be there for the live event Friday night next week, hit the food trucks with the family and experience church. Uh, well, I'm just ready to, to worship. Uh, I was here. They've been practicing for a while this morning, getting ready to go. Good. They're going to really kind of sing. Uh, they want to sing a song over you today and over the church. Uh, beautiful just proclamation um, from God's word over us as a church. And then we're going to kind of swell up with them and sing some songs about the goodness of our God. So, Jesus, it's in your name we begin today. We're invoking your name. And because of your name, we can walk into the throne room, the holy of holies. We can have a holy encounter because of the name of Jesus. We declare your name today. It's written on us. It's cover, Your blood is covering us. And because of that, and we can shout from the mountaintops, inhabit our praise today. It's in your name. We gather together as the church. Holy Spirit, pull us tight. It's in your name we begin. Amen. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall 
And all these lonely roads that I have traveled on But there was Jesus And when this life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found well, I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now That there was Jesus And listen, church In the waiting, in the searching In the healing, in the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment where I've been see it there was Jesus yeah for this man who needs amazing kind of mm, yeah. for forgiveness and the price I couldn't pay Ooh. well I'm not perfect but I thank God every day that there was Jesus Come on, yes. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, in the blessing buried in the broken pieces. Oh. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it. There was Jesus on the mountains, in the valleys. There was Jesus in the shadows of the alley. There was Jesus and in the fires, in the floods. There was Jesus always is and always was. Come on, tell. There was Jesus. Oh, yes. And there was Jesus. Now, come on, if you're thankful for that, wherever you are right now in this moment, would you just begin to lift up your voice to Jesus? Thank you, Father, that in every single season, God, no matter what we go through, no matter the trials and the issues that we face, you are always there. You are a God who keeps your promises. You are a God who stands with us in the middle of every fire, every flood, everything that we go through. God, you are always right there. And we put confidence and trust in your name, Jesus, in your word and in your promises. We thank you, Lord, that because of the finished work on Calvary, because of what you've done, we can stand with boldness and confidence that you are with us. Because of what you've done, we can face every single thing. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that there is no fear, no anxiety, no thing bigger than your promises. And we trust that this morning. We trust that. No matter where you are, let's sing these songs of faith together. Let's declare this. Because he lives. Come on, church. I can face tomorrow. And because he
lost its grip on me and you have broken every chain and there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope how great the chasm that lay between us and how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the now then came the morning and then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of and out of the side the roaring lion declared the name. Come on, we're going to say that again. Then came the morning. This is our hope, church. Then came. Then came the morning that sealed the Salvation in your name, 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus, oh Jesus Christ, you are my living hope. Come on, give him praise wherever you are right now, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. just go to a time of uh, prayer with me right now, church. Father God in heaven, we're singing about just how you are our hope, and we just focus our gaze right now. We focus our heart and our attitude completely on you, Jesus. It's in your name that we come into this place singing these songs. It's in your name, Jesus, we remember you. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 14, says this. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And Jesus is waiting on this meal that he's going to have with us. And until that time, he's instructed us to have this meal in remembrance of his work on the cross. He gives us instructions in verse 17. He took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God comes. Let's remember him this morning by drinking of the fruit that reminds us of his blood. In verse 19, he took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you've got something that represents the body of Christ that he's given for us, let's take that at this time. It doesn't matter where we are at, Jesus, we can immediately be connected because of you to the Father. We can be with our family in the living room, and we can be by ourselves just thumbing through Facebook. We can be re-watching this on a Tuesday afternoon. It doesn't matter. We can immediately connect because of you, Jesus, to the Father. You pull us together. We remember what you have done. We remember that you are alive. We believe that you are working in our midst right now. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, church, it has been great being uh, with you today online. I'm just going through the chat on my phone and uh, looking at people and uh, seeing if people are ready to come here and get baptized. We actually have some people, I believe, that are on the way right now and want to be doing uh, baptisms here today. Very excited to make that happen, excited about what God is doing. And uh, one thing that we've not talked a lot about during this whole season, if you would have told me in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, that we would not physically meet as a church for just about, if not over six months, I would say, man, that's that's crazy. I can't imagine that. But that's actually what's happened. And i got to tell you that uh, God has been faithful during that time. Um, and I believe God has been faithful to so many of you. And in God's faithfulness, uh, we want to challenge you to be faithful to what he calls us to do, which is to give. If you've maybe fallen out of the pattern of giving here at Generations, uh, you can text to give. We put the number on the screen here where you can give by texting. You can use our app. You can go online and use our website to give. 
And our office is open here uh, throughout the week, throughout the weekday. If you come, you can ring the doorbell, and we've got masks, and we can greet you, and you can give at any time during the week, uh, just in the office. A lot of people have been mailing gifts in, and God's work is continuing to happen. The gospel is being proclaimed. People are being baptized. The church is growing. Families are being ministered to, and we are coming back. We are regathering physically as a church and during this season, and we want to challenge you to be faithful because God is a faithful God. And when we're obedient to Him, He shows up in our lives in incredible ways. We don't want you to miss this opportunity. And we want the storehouse of the Lord to be full so that we are ready to do the work that we have to do in front of us as the church regathers. Uh, Today is an incredible day of worship. And I don't know if you experience, if you're just logging on now, but uh, incredible time of worship with our team. And we're going to do what we consistently and always do here. We're going to go to God's Word. And uh, I want to introduce you to a brand new staff member at our church. Rob and Liz Hammond are brand new to our team. Rob is going to be serving as the senior executive pastor, bringing a ton of experience to our church. And so we're so excited to have Rob sharing with us for the very first time today. So Rob, brother, would you come on? And I want to pray over you as we get started here. This is Rob, everybody. We're excited to have him on the team. Would you pray with me? Church, I mean, right now, let's not not walk through the motions. Would you pray over the ministry that Rob and Liz are beginning here with us at Generations? Father, and I I care deeply for uh, this this man that has come to uh, serve on our team and his family. I ask that you bless their season of ministry as they're uh, moving into a home here this week and getting to know the new community around them. They at the baptism service last night, and they're like, this is our family. I just saw them standing there and be like, Johnny's right. They are a little crazy. You're like, we, we get crazy about you, Jesus. And they're so excited to be a part of the work that you're doing here. And as he comes sharing your word today, Father God, would you speak through him? So blessed to have Rob on the team. It's in your name we begin, Jesus, to dive into your word today. Amen. All right, brother. Man. So my family and I, we were so excited to be a part of the Generations team here, and we are just pumped about the days ahead. We think that the greatest days just lie before us. In fact, my, one of my favorite sayings is, don't allow what lies behind you to make you miss what lies before you. And we believe that, um, man, we're just really excited about what God's going to do here through this church through this local body of believers, what he's going to do in this community, and what he's going to do through this team. And so we're so excited to be a part of Pastor Johnny's team and to be a part of Generations. I get the opportunity to conclude this series, The Goat, the greatest of all time. There's always debate. There's always discussion about who is the greatest of all time. But we know that the greatest of all time truly is Jesus. Jesus is the champion. Jesus is the one that can take our life and turn it completely around. Jesus is the one who gives us that living hope. And that's what I want to share today. So if you're watching, would you just go in the comments and just say, hey, this is where we're watching from. Uh, Maybe you'd put in there your name so our our staff can pray for you specifically this week. We can let you know that um, what God's doing in your life. And so if you just put your name in, you know, Rob and Liz, we're watching from Odessa, Florida, or Odessa, Texas, or maybe you're watching from Kalamazoo, Michigan, or maybe you're somewhere halfway around the world. We would love to know who's watching today. Just put in the comments, say, this is our name, this is where we're watching And we would just like to know that about you. And so thank you so much for being here today and allowing us to share God's word with you. I'm just super pumped about it. In the 90s, as we talk about the GOAT, there were some amazing players that were playing. And as they were playing in the NBA, we find that some of them were playing on a a high capacity. Some of them were playing... um, they were really uh, playing at a top level. And one of those players was Reggie Miller. And in 1998, Reggie Miller had one of the greatest of all times, uh, one of the greatest shots in NBA history. He shoots a three at the end of a game against the Chicago Bulls that gives them the victory. And, and it's still known as one of the greatest last-second shots in NBA history. 
Well, in 1999, I was coaching high school basketball in Louisville, Kentucky. And I had the privilege of my team, we were invited to play before the Indiana Pacers game. And so we're up there playing, and during the fourth quarter, I noticed that Reggie Miller comes out the player's tunnel, and he's standing there, and he's watching our team play. And towards the end of the game, I grab my son, who's two years old, and we walk up to Reggie Miller, and I say, hey, Christian, this is Reggie Miller. He is clutch at the end of games. He is one of the greatest shooters to ever play in the NBA. And then I ask Reggie a request. I said, Reggie, would you mind signing this card for my son uh, just so we can have this from you, your autograph? And he totally ignored me. He didn't even make eye contact with me. He just ignored my request. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, I'm asking you for my son, not even for me. Would you sign this card? And he totally blew me off. I was like, are you, is this seriously happening? And so I looked at my son and I said, Reggie is one of the greatest shooters in the NBA, but he also must have a hearing problem. And we kind of turned away and we walked off. And I was like, tick, like, I can't believe this. And so I realized this past week that Reggie Miller had a birthday. And there's still a little angst in my spirit about the way that he ignored my request. That day I had an encounter with a goat. And today I want to share a Bible story with you that's found in Mark chapter 10 about a man who had an encounter with the goat, Jesus, and Jesus did not ignore his request. So if you take your Bibles, your tablet, your iPad, whatever it may be, and you turn to Mark chapter 10, you know, Pastor Johnny started this series in this same passage, Mark chapter 10, he talked about James and John, and they had a request. They wanted some divine seats. They wanted some special seats in the kingdom. And so we're going to look at the passage right below that as we look at this thought, an encounter with the goat. Look what the Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. It says, as they came to Jericho, Jesus is passing through Jericho. He's on his way to Jerusalem. Jericho is the, the last stop before you get to Jerusalem. Jericho is not a place they were going to hang out. They were just passing through. It's known as the city of palms. It's a beautiful city. A lot of wealth there. A lot of Sadducees and Pharisees and religious li uh, rulers live there in Jericho. And Jesus is passing through Jericho. And the Bible says, as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a great crowd, a huge crowd. You know, Jesus is very popular at this time. He may have not been known at this time as the goat, but he had a lot of followers. He had a lot of fans. And wherever Jesus went, it created a commotion. And the Bible says there was a great crowd that followed he and his disciples. And Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, look how he is identified. Immediately, it's not... We're not hearing who he was as much as how he was identified. He had a label. The son of Timaeus was sitting by the roadside. And the Bible says in verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. One of the first things I see in this passage is that Bartimaeus had a desire. He had a desire, a change. He had a desire for a change. And I think in our lives, that is so pivotal for us to have an encounter with the goat. The greatest of all time, we must come to a place where we desire a change, something different, something new. I can almost imagine Bartimaeus as he's sitting on the side of the road and all these people are walking by and there's a lot of commotion, a lot of noise. He might even ask, what is going on? What's all the commotion about? And someone may have said to him, well, Bartimaeus, Jesus is in town. Jesus is coming through Jericho. Jesus is here. And I can almost imagine in, in his mind and in, in his heart, he was thinking, maybe today, Maybe today is the day that my life is going to change forever. Maybe today is the day that I'm going to be able to see for the first time in my entire life. When I think about Bartimaeus the beggar, the Bible says that when he cried out and he desired a change, immediately in verse 48, many rebuked him and told him to be silent. Whenever you see the word many, 
it always means more than half. So more than half of those, those fans, those followers of Jesus, and even some of the disciples probably turned to Bartimaeus and they said, man, be quiet. Jesus doesn't have time for you. He's on a mission. He's got to move. He's got to get through this town. And when I think about that, I think about how they saw Bartimaeus. You see, they saw him as a beggar. They saw him as a blind man. They did not see his potential. They did not see what he could be. They saw him as he was. And his label that he had worn all of his life, he believed that he could change that label by having an encounter with the goat, the greatest of all time. He believed that he could change by having an encounter with Jesus. You know, one thing I found in my life, and may be true in yours, whenever we try to take a step towards faith or we try to take a step towards Jesus or we try to take a step towards change, you know what I often find? There will always be people in our lives that try to hold us back. They want us to stay in our darkness. They want us to stay in our bondage. They want us to stay in our addiction. They don't want you to be free. And these these people that were around Jesus that day, they were trying to keep Bartimaeus stuck in his despair, stuck in his depression, stuck in his blindness, stuck in his dysfunction. The question is today is, who has your ear? We hear so many voices in our life. Some of your students are hearing voices at school. You're walking the halls and you got, constantly have voices. You're hearing people and, and they're sharing, well, this is what I think you should do. We hear voices at work. We hear voices at home. But what's important is who has your ear the most? You see, Bartimaeus would have missed out on having this encounter with Jesus, having this encounter with the goat if he would listen to the crowd. There came a point where Bartimaeus ignored the crowd because he wanted something new. He desired a change. You see, sometimes our limitations can lead us to new beginnings. I remember hearing a story about a husband and wife, and the husband could never remember anything. He would leave his phone. He would lose his keys. He never had his wallet, and his wife was becoming so irritated with him. He was so limited because he could not remember and one day she says, I need you to go to the store and I need you to get some peaches and bring them home. And so he, he makes sure he's making the effort to get to the, the store. And as he gets there, he's, he's thinking to himself, man, I want to make sure I get this right because my wife is so frustrated with me because I'm constantly forgetting things. I'm so limited in my memory. And so he gets to the store and he gets the can of peaches and he gets up to the counter, the register to pay for them. And he realizes oh my goodness, I have forgotten my wallet. I don't have any money. So he makes a decision. I'll, I'll just walk out with the peaches and the next time I'm in, I'll pay for them. And so as he's walking out of the store, sure enough, they catch him for shoplifting. He has to go to, he has to, go to court and he's standing before the judge and the judge says, I tell you what I'm gonna do. For every peach that's in the can, you're gonna spend one day in jail. And from the back of the room, the man's wife yells out, I think he stole a can of peas too. That day, that guy's limitation was going to cause him to have a new beginning, probably 100 days in jail. But it's interesting that our limitations sometimes can lead us to a new beginning. It's interesting to note the meaning of Bartimaeus' name. Bartimaeus' his name meant man of honor. I can only imagine that Bartimaeus was probably thinking to himself, man, my life is everything but honor. I don't feel any honor. I'm a beggar. And some of you may be able to relate with Bartimaeus today. Someone one day spoke a word over your life. And as you look at your life today, it looks nothing like what was spoken over your life. As you look at your life and the shape your life may be in and the needs you may have to have an encounter with Jesus, what was spoken over you has not come to life yet. You may be like Barnabas. 
You're just stuck. But I love Bartimaeus' determination. His desire for a change. I love the way that the crowd was not going to hold him back from seeking Jesus and getting a miracle. The Bible says, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, Bartimaeus was tired of living that. He was tired of living that old life. He was tired of being led around and being dependent on someone else. Bartimaeus wanted a change. He wanted something new. He wanted a new opportunity. He wanted a new beginning. Bartimaeus wanted a changed life. But what about you today? You may say, Rob, you don't understand. My, my limitation is hopeless. I've pretty much have given up of ever my situation ever changing. It's hopeless, Rob. I mean, this is the hand of cards I've been dealt. I must just live with it. My life at this moment seems hopeless. I want you to hear me and hear me well. Psalms 34 verse 18 says this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And today you may be heart, your heart may be brokenhearted. Today your spirit may be crushed, but I want you to hear me. The creator of heaven, the creator of earth is close by and he can change your life. In verse 49, we keep reading in this text, and it says, And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. Jesus stopped. An incredible phrase. The goat, the greatest of all time, stops and notices the one. He doesn't notice, he takes his focus off the crowd. And he focuses on the one blind beggar on the side of the road with the other marginal lives of people, the people who are marginalized and, and they're off to the side. He stops and he recognizes the one. It's the only time we read in the scriptures where Jesus stopped. And today, I wanna share this with you, that if Jesus stopped for Barnabas, that Jesus will stop for you. He will recognize your need. He will recognize your problem. He will recognize your storm. The Bible says in John chapter six, verse 37, those the Father has given me, I will come, will come to me and I will never reject them. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? God will never reject you when you come to him with your need. Just like Barnabas, he cries out because he desired a change. But the second thing I see in this passage is just really amazing, is that Barnabas activated his faith. The Bible says that he threw off his cloak and he sprang up and he came to Jesus. He threw off the beggar's cloak that represented the old life that he had always lived. He threw it off and, and he comes to Jesus. The beggar's cloak was a long flowing robe and, and the front of it kind of would lay out in front of the person who was begging. And he'd, as he is begging there, people would walk by and they'd, they'd give different types of money and different things. That's where they collected their items that were being given to them. And the Bible says that Bartimaeus just kind of threw it off. He threw off that, that cloak because you see, he believed that something was gonna happen that day would always change his life forever. He was getting rid of the old and he was excited about what was coming towards him. A new life, a new opportunity. You see, faith is believing before what will only make sense after. Did you catch that? That faith is believing before what will only make sense after. You see, Bartimaeus believed that I'm never gonna need this cloak anymore. I'm never gonna be on the side of this road begging anymore. My life is about to change because I desire a change and I'm activating my faith. 
I'm taking a step towards Jesus. I'm calling out to him because I need a miracle. I need an encounter with the goat. He believed that Jesus was not going to reject his request. The Bible continues to say that Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? It's the second time that Jesus asked this question. We first see this phrase in the passage that Pastor Johnny preached the first week of the GOAT series. He asked James and John, what do you want me to do for you? But right here he asked Barnabas, what do you want me to do for you? You see, Jesus knew what Barnabas wanted. Jesus knew what Barnabas was in need of. But he still wanted Barnabas to tell him. He still wanted Barnabas to activate his faith. He wanted him to confess. You see, there's power in confession. The Bible says that the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. I want to see again. You know, in every recovery ministry, there's one singular focus, confession. Confession that I have a problem. Confession that I have an issue. Confession that I have an addiction. There's one common step. And for everyone who's ever come through a recovery ministry, and they're trying to get free from that addiction, or they're trying to get free from whatever that problem may be, it's important for them to have that step. There is power in confession. And so not only did Barnabas activate his faith by throwing off his cloak, but the second thing he did was he confessed his need. He confessed his problem. And it's the same question today. What do you need Jesus to do for you? You may say, Rob, my life is a mess. Rob, my life is totally out of control. Rob, I need Jesus to do a miracle in my life. I need Jesus to do something so big in my life that I can't do for myself. I need Jesus to deliver me out of this mess. I love that Bartimaeus was desperate. And Jesus reaches those people who are in desperate moments in Bartimaeus' desperation, he reaches out to Jesus and he says, I want to see. I want to see. You see, Jesus never rejects people who are desperate. He hears the cries of desperate people. And this passage ends with Jesus telling Bartimaeus, go, your faith has healed you. Immediately, the Bible says he received his sight and he followed Jesus down the road. The last thing I see in this passage, not only did Barnabas desire a change, not only did he activate his faith by throwing off the cloak, I'm not gonna need this anymore. I'm pressing towards something new. There was power in his confession Jesus, I want to see again. The last thing we see is follow the goat. Of all the things that Bartimaeus could have done, of all the places he could have gone, you know, he could have gone back home and seen his family. He could have gone home to see his mom and daddy he'd never had laid eyes on before. He could have started a new career. He could have moved on to a, a new journey. But the one thing that Bartimaeus did was the Bible says he followed Jesus down the road. It's an amazing thought. There was one road that led from Jericho to Jerusalem, and that road would lead Jesus eventually to Calvary. And Bartimaeus follows Jesus down the road. So my question to you today is this. Who are you following? You know, in our day and age, in our culture, you can be identified by who you follow and who follows you on social media. I mean, there's value in that. Guess what? This person follows me. Look at me. I've got so many followers. But who are you following today? 
And on that, what road are you following as well? What road are you walking on? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, there are two roads, two gates. There's a wide road that leads to destruction, and the Bible says that many are walking that road. And then the Bible says there's another road, a narrow road, and there are few that find it. So think about that passage, wide road, many on the wide road, narrow road, few people will find the narrow road. The question is today, who are you following? What road are you walking today? Maybe you, just like Barnabas, you need to have an encounter with the goat. You need to have an encounter with Jesus. So think about this story. I love the story of Barnabas for so many reasons. Because it was in my life when my 20s, when I was in complete darkness, I was walking down the wrong road. Everything that seemed to be right was totally wrong and everything that was completely wrong seemed right. See, that's what darkness does. It distorts our view. And I think about Barimaeus and where he was at in the story. He wasn't part of the crowd. He was kind of an outcast. The disciples and the followers and the fans were, were trying to rebuke him and tell him to be quiet. Jesus doesn't have time for you. That may be some of the lies that you're believing today. Man, your life's too much of a mess. Jesus doesn't have time for you. It's hopeless. It will never change. I want to share with you today, it can change. It changed for me. It happened when I called out to Christ, when I called out to Jesus and I just confessed the shape that I was in, the mess that I had made my life. I remember waking up one morning thinking to myself, what are you doing? You know better than this. You've been taught better. Why are you living this way? The truth of the matter is this. Some of you today watching, you're in complete darkness. You're not following after Jesus. You're not walking that narrow road. And you find yourself in need of a Savior. The Bible says that God designed you, that God created you, he, he formed you. He, he fashioned you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And his desire is for you to know him personally. You say, Rob, you don't understand. You don't understand the, the mess I'm in. There's one thing I do know for sure is this. When you confess, no matter what your life may look like today, it doesn't matter what you've done or what you've become or even where you are today, I want you to hear me and hear me well. God's not mad at you. He loves you. He loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. So you don't have to walk around in darkness. He's not mad. He loves you. He will never ignore you. He will stop and he will hear your cry when you cry out to him. He did for me. He's done for so many others, and he'll do it for you. You know, the truth of the matter is some of you, you weren't even planning on watching today. And while you're watching at this very moment, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, today's the day. Today's the day for your miracle. Today is the day that you can encounter the goat, and your life can change forever. But Rob, you have no idea the shape my life's in right now. Well, you're correct, I don't. But God does. 
And I love the part that he doesn't care. He's here for you. And if you'll cry out to him, he will receive you today. There are so many people in that party that was traveling with Jesus. So many people in the streets of Jericho. But only one person experienced a changed life. And that was Barnabas. From our passage, he experienced a new beginning. Why? Because, I, because he desired a change. Because he activated his faith. And lastly, because he followed the goat. So today, the Bible says it's as simple as A, admitting that you're a sinner and B, believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and C, confessing him as the Lord and Savior of your life. The Bible says if you'll do that, you can have an encounter with the goat. And maybe you need someone to talk to. You can go to our virtual lobby and our pastors are there to help you. Or maybe you want to set up an appointment this week to talk to someone about making a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you want to take that step of obedience and be baptized. You can do that today. You can come by the church up till noon and we'll make sure that that can happen. In fact, Pastor Johnny's already baptized someone today. You can be a part of that. It's just crying out. And so today, as we recognize Jesus as the goat, the greatest of all time, we also recognize Jesus as the champion. And so our team's gonna lead us in the song, The Champion. And I pray today that as they sing these words, that it will resonate in your heart. Today, you don't have to continue walking in darkness. You don't have to continue in your blindness of sin. You can be free. You can have a changed life. You can experience freedom. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn me you give all we don't deserve and you take the them to glory and you are my champion and giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won I am who you say I am you'll crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavens With the one who has conquered it all Yes, you have been. And now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease This is my victory Cause you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one.
have the authority Jesus has given me and when I open up my mouth miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me Thank you for leading that song. And I love it. I love it. Jesus is the GOAT. Jesus is the champion. And uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking here now. Uh, we just got done baptizing uh, Debbie. Mike, her husband, was here to take pictures. And uh, we're, we're really serious because Jesus is seriously the GOAT. And so I know you had plans today. I, they, they just don't matter as much as taking care of the most important thing in your life, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord and confessing him before others and being obedient to baptism. I, this trumps every other plan. Okay, so uh, we've got time before the next service starts. Uh, you can get in the car and be here and uh, get baptized during the 11 o'clock hour. And we so want to serve you in that way. Church, we love y'all. And uh, man, make sure y'all reach out to Pastor Rob. Welcome him to the team. Uh, we can't wait to see you Friday night. It's 6.30 for food trucks, and tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., doing the 21 days of prayer focus as we regather. God is doing amazing stuff. And so this is your time. Dive in, church. This is your time. God bless. We'll see you soon.